3.7, inverse functions. I'll write it over here for you. Inverse functions. Now, let's talk about the same thing we were just talking about. You know, my whole bread toast thing. So if you take a toaster, if you take a toaster and you put in bread, what do you get out? You get out toast, right? Put in bread, you get out toast. And you put in bread, you get out toast. Right? So this is the uh, input. This is the input, and this is the output. You know quite well. You've done this probably many times. Now, um, what then, think with me, what, how would an inverse toaster work? So I'll write toaster negative 1. What that means, that means inverse toaster. So how would an inverse toaster work? It's going to switch inputs and outputs. That's what we mean by inverse functions today. We're going to switch inputs and outputs. So so now it's a normal toaster. You put in bread, put in bread, you get out toast. So an inverse toaster, a switch toaster, what, what would you put in? Put in the toast, right? And it would turn it back into bread. Does that make sense? That, I mean, it seems totally bizarre. Like, why would anybody want such a thing? But that's what we mean by inverse. I want to give you a physical idea before we dive into all the X's and the math stuff. Does that physically make sense, what we're talking about? That's what we mean by an inverse anything in math. We mean we're switching inputs and outputs. So that would that'd be really handy, right? Walmart this this Christmas, right? You, you, the inverse toaster, in case you throw the bread in, the toast pops up, and you're like, oh, I was going to have eggs, I forgot. You're like, oh, no problem. I got my handy dandy inverse toaster. I'll just put that toast in the inverse toaster, put down the lever, a minute later, turns it back into bread. Just like that. Legendary, you don't think so? I don't think it's going to be a top seller this Christmas. All right. Uh, it prob probably, probably not. Anyway, but you get the idea, right? So it, it, it switches inputs and outputs. So, all right, so with that physical thought in mind, let's look at the functions here. They're saying f of 4 equals 3. That means you put in 4, you get out 3. So it's the idea of the input-output, like a toaster. So you put in a 4. So this f machine, whatever it is, is function. You plug in 4, it pops out a 3. So then if you took the inverse, see the minus 1 up there? That means inverse. So if you take the inverse function and you put in 3, you put in 3, what do you think you're going to get out? Four. Yeah, it'll go back to 4. It just switched the answer. So the answer is 4. Does that make sense? It's just making sure you're getting the idea of the switching of inputs and outputs. So if a regular function, see how this is a regular function, F? You put in 4. You get out 3. So the inverse, see the negative 1 on there? That means inverse. Put in 3, get out 4. Turns it around. Let's try the next one. Now they're saying, okay, uh, the inverse function of negative 3 gives negative 3. Well, that's kind of a dumb one, huh? When you get out the same thing you put in, switching it's not going to do anything, so the answer is going to be negative 3. That's kind of a dumb one. So, all right. Let's, let's move on. Not a lot going on in that one. How about number 2 on this one? Oh, yeah. So number two, let's use this table. So this table is basically telling us some inputs and some outputs. Inputs and outputs. So you put in zero, you get out two. You put in one, you get out three. You put in two, you get out six. You put in three, you get out eight, et cetera, et cetera. Inputs and outputs for some function. So here we go, f of six. What's that going to equal? Saying you put in six. You get out 5. Just look at the table, huh? And now, what's the next question? It's saying, okay, what, what do you put in? What's x? What do you put in to get out 6? Yeah, 2. x being 2 makes an output of 6, doesn't it? x being 2. So that x is 2 there. Good. Everybody seeing that? How about F inverse of 5? See the negative 1, the, the inverse of 5? 
So that, so that five is at basically an output, so to speak. It's, right, you understand? We, we switched inputs and outputs. So for inverse functions, you put in the output. So we're looking for a, a five. So over here, whoops, over here. So that came from, that'll go back to six, It'll, right? Because inverse functions go backwards, right? So the, reg, the regular function will go, I don't know where to write things. The regular function will go this way, and the inverse function will go backwards. Yeah, so five will go back to six for the inverse function. Final one. Now, how about what's this? They're saying inverse function is going to go backwards to two. What is going to go backwards to two? Do you see it? Six will go backwards to two. Yeah. Is that good? How that works? So inverse function just runs things backwards, like toast back into bread. Regular function just goes left to right. Inverse function goes right to left on that. All right, number three. Now the same thing on a graph. F of zero. So that's an x value of zero. So reg regular functions, we plug in at x, we get out y. Inverse functions... It reverses it. So what do we plug into an inverse function, x or y? Y, because it switches it, and it comes back x. So remember that. That's the main idea for all these questions we're about to answer. Everybody seeing that? So for regular function, you plug in x, you get out y. For an inverse function, it's backwards. You plug in y, you get out x. Huh? Just like back here in the table, right? The y values came first for inverse functions. Okay. So they're saying f of 0. So that means that 0 must be an x. See how I know that? Because it's inside of a regular function, not an inverse function. So find x equals 0. What's the point on the graph that is x equals 0? It's right there. Over 0, up 4. That's x, y. Everybody see that point? That's the only dot on the graph that has an x value of 0. So when you put in 0, what y do you get out? 4. Let's try the next one. What x value do you plug in to get a y value of 0? What point on that graph has a y? See how I know that's y? How do I know this 0 is y? Because for a regular function, x goes in the parentheses, y comes out. So this must be y. So what point on that graph, on that line, has a y value of 0? This one, over 1, up 0. That's the only point that's at a height, a y value of 0. Huh? So the x value must be 1. Next one, f inverse of 0. So what you've got to figure out, is that 0 an x value or a y value? It's a y because we put y values into inverse functions, don't we? So this is a y value of 0. So then you look up to that graph and find the point that has a y value of 0. That's this point. And what is the x that goes with him? 1. Make sense? That's what inverse functions do. You plug in the y, what it equals is x. So we gave it the x. Last one. Um, what? Now they're calling that x. I know this is probably confusing for you. Really, X and Y are just names. You can call them Joe and Tom. It's really just a name. And, and I know it's probably confusing to the kid. Mr. you just said it's Y. It really is. It really is Y. And you think, well, why are they putting X there? Well, they're taking their freedom to call it anything they want. But really, it's a Y value. On the graph, it's a Y value. What I'm saying here is really the truth on the graph. Even though they're calling it X there, it's not... It's not a real X like X on the graph. They're just calling it that. So they could put anything they want in the parentheses there because it's a dummy variable. It's just holding a spot. They could call it Joe. F of Joe is what? You know? So don't, be, don't let them confuse you. That's really not X. It's really Y here. This is really what? How do I know? Because it's being put into this is really Y. Because it's being put into an inverse function. So what is X? 
what, 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 I mean, again, this is what. What does it have to be? So this must be x here. Are, are you tracking with me? I know this is probably confusing, huh? Just, again, this, this is y because it's being put into an inverse function. And this is x because it's coming out of an inverse function. So what are we, what are we plugging in to get a x value of 0? This right here. y is 4. It's 4. Does that make sense? I know that's kind of confusing. They tried, they're tricking us with that x. Just remember, it's really y in an inverse function, and it equals the x value. All right. Um, below is the table for the function. Choose the one table below, which is the inverse. Okay, so here we have a function, and there's the x's, and there's the y's, right? The inputs and the outputs. Which of those, we'll call them a, b, c, and d, which of those four is the inverse table? Which one is it? A, you know, A, B, C, or D? Say A, B, C, or D. Which of those is the inverse function of this original? Yeah, it looks like. See how that one is just switched the X's and the Y's? What I mean is they've taken the top row and the bottom row and they've just flipped them. They've just taken this row and this row and just flipped them. See how the the 3, 6, 8, 13, 15 is down here. 3, 6, 8, 13. It was the bottom, now it's the top. So that's the inverse function, huh? That's, again, that's what an inverse function means, a switching of x's and y's, a switching of inputs and outputs. All right. Stop me if you want to talk more about it. Everybody got that one down? For doing that. To find f inverse. Step one. Switch x and y. Step two, solve for y. So to find an inverse function, that's, that's the two steps. You switch x and y, and you solve for y. Because that's what an inverse function is, an inverting the switching of x and y. All right, so let's do it. So we, come, so we grab this first off and bring it down here. But I'm going to make that a y in the front, right? Instead of f of x, remember function values are y values, aren't they? So I'm always free to do that. I'm just going to call it y instead of f of x or g of x or h of x or whatever they call it. So y equals 2 minus x. Okay. Now, so step one. Let's do it. Step number one. Switch x and y. So that means literally that x and that y are going to switch positions. So x comes out here, y goes out there. Everything else stays put. Nothing else moves. Just like poof, the x becomes a y and poof, the y becomes an x. Okay. Trade rolls. That's what, that's what you know, inverse functions are. Switching the bread and the toast. Right? They just trade rolls. Okay. That's step one. Step two now Solve for y. Solve for y. So how do I? So I'm, I'm taking that little equation, and y is saying, I want to be alone. Get rid of this stuff so that I can be alone. So what do we do to get y alone? First, we got to get rid of that two, huh? How do we get rid of that two? Is that two a positive two or a negative two? Remember, you look in the front of the two. There's nothing, which means it's a positive two, huh? Don't let that other minus sign disturb you. That, that goes on the y, doesn't it? That's the y's minus sign. We'll get to him in a minute. But first, we've got to get rid of that positive two because the y wants to be alone. So what am I going to do? What's the opposite of positive two? I'm going to subtract two. Boom. Good so far. This will become x minus 2, and the negative y will drop down. So I'm, I'm moving to get y alone. So I got rid of the positive 2 by subtracting 2 from both sides. And now I've got to get rid of that negative sign that's right on the y. How do I get rid of that negative sign? Yeah, it, it, what, what if you had like a, a 3 in the front here? What would you do? You would divide by 3, wouldn't you? Right? So a negative is the same thing. It's really a negative 1 there. So to get rid of it, we 
divide through by negative 1. And then we divide all those guys by negative 1 as well. Remember, whenever we divide, we have to divide all the terms on both sides. Equal treatment, right? So that gets, you know, two negatives here cancel to become positive y. Perfect. Y is totally alone now. No sign on him. Uh, nothing's on him. And now what happens on the other side? Well, let's do it step by step. What is x over negative 1? Negative x. What's negative 2 over negative 1? Two negatives? Positive 2. There we go. That's the inverse function. The answer is minus x plus 2. That's the opposite of that original function. Minus x plus 2. Is that making sense? Questions I can answer on that one? Okay, let's try this one. So step 1. Switch x and y. Let me let you do that. And so remember, this is this function, it's really a y in the front. So y is 11x plus 12. So switch x and y. So the x goes to the front. That's step one. And then step two, solve for y. Let me jump in. So how do we... So this equation, y is saying I want to be alone... Get rid of this 11 and this 12. So what do we do first to get y alone? Yeah, get rid of the 12, huh? So we're going to go subtract 12, subtract 12, boom. So we get 11y equals x minus 12. Last step to get y alone? And everybody, huh? Everybody by the 11. So it's x over 11 minus 12. Or you can make it one big 11, but both are fine. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Do you, know, you guys know that both those are the same thing? You can make it one big fraction with an 11 below or two separate fractions. Either way, it means both of them, both the x and the 12, are divided by the 11. Both answers are good. That's the inverse function. This right here is now. Let, let's let's stop and observe how that that probably seems right to you for a second. In other words, the original. If we look up there at the original function, it was a what? Multiply by eleven. See what it's doing with the x? It's timesing it by eleven, and then what? Adding twelve. So what's the opposite of that? What's the inverse of that? Subtracting twelve. That's the opposite of adding twelve. And Dividing by 11, which is the opposite of multiplying by 11. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? We just, that's the inverse function. It's doing the opposite. Turning the toast back into bread, so to speak, huh? We good there? Questions on that? So we're going to do a bunch of these now, and they're going to get messier and messier in the steps, but it's the same process. Step one, switch X and Y. Step two, solve for Y. All right, let's try number seven. F of X equals... 1 over x plus 6. All right, let's do the two steps. Step 1, switch, invert. Right, let's say find the inverse function. Switch x and y. Switch or invert. Invert x and y. So this is y out here. And so they're going to switch. All right, so switch those and then solve for y. So this becomes x. And that's y. Good so far. We switched x and y. And then step two is solve for y. So how do we solve for y? We put this one over 1. And we go diagonal, diagonal, right? Diagonal, diagonal. We cross multiply. That's how we handle two equal fractions. Is that good? So then we get x times y plus 6 is 1 times 1. Is that, is that step okay? Does everybody see how I went diagonal, diagonal there? And then just laid them all flat. And now what do we do with those parentheses? Distribute, that x is going to distribute, so we get xy plus 6x. And 1 times 1 is just 1, huh? Nothing, nothing much going on there. That's not 1.1, that's, maybe I should have used parentheses, it's 1 times 1. 
right? They're multiplying, diagonal, diagonal, multiplying. Okay, so now, at this point, it's easy to get kind of lost. What, what are we doing? What, what are we trying to do? Trying to solve for Y, huh? Y is over there saying, I want to be alone. So you got to kind of like keep your eye on the ball, so to speak. Here's the ball, right? Keep focused on it. That, so that Y right there is saying, I want to be alone. So what do we do to get that Y alone? Well, where we do the adding, subtracting first, and then the dividing last, huh? So subtract that 6x first from both sides. And so we get xy is 1 minus 6x. Last step, divide by the x, right? Because that'll, that'll put the y alone. We good? So divide both sides by x. So there we go. That's the inverse function. Hey, can we cancel those x's? Why not? Because the, the subtraction, Costco says no, right? Remember, pluses and minuses are a package deal, which means if you want to do anything with that uh, 1 minus 6x, you go like that and cancel the whole package, or you don't touch it. You're not allowed to just say, well, I just want the x part, please. Nope, not allowed. Remember, pluses and minuses glue things together. Make them a package deal like shopping at Costco. You can't just buy one at Costco. You can't just buy one of a plus or minus package deal. Right? So I cannot do that. I, so I can't do anything. I just leave it as it stands. If that was times, if that was one times 6x, then I would totally cancel the x's, wouldn't I? If it was times. But if it's pluses or minuses, they glue things together. Make them a package deal. You buy all or you buy nothing. You can't buy part. So we're done right there. Does that one make sense? Right, good? All right, let's try. I'm gonna, any other questions on that one? Okay, so let's try it. So step one, switch X and Y. So this is Y equals 11 plus the cube root of X. And I'm going to switch X and Y. So that means these guys are going to totally trade roles. So this will become X here. And the Y is suddenly in the cube root now. So we switch roles, X and Y switch. So that's step one. Step two, solve for Y. So I'm going to try to solve. I'm going to take that equation. And Y is saying, I want to be alone. Get rid of this 11. Get rid of this third root thing so that I can be alone, right? Trying to get Y alone. So what do we always do first? The adding, subtracting, right? So what's my first step? Minus the 11 from both sides. So then we get X minus 11. These cancel. Third root of Y. Good so far? We're almost there. Now, here's the trick question. How do you get rid of that weird third root thing off of the Y so the Y can be alone? Oh. You cube it by three. Exactly. It's the power, huh? That's the op Roots are the opposites of powers, aren't they? Now, remember how we've learned that a, that a normal root, like you see if you have the square root of X plus 7 or whatever equals whatever, blah, 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 and you want to get rid of that root, uh, you two power both sides. Why? Because there's nothing in the hook, which means it's really a two. Do you guys remember that? That if there's nothing in the hook... It's a square root. That's what we call it, huh? Square means two, doesn't it? You with me on this? What do we call this? x would We call that x squared. squared. See, when we say square, we're saying two. I don't know if you've ever stayed up late at night and thought about that. Then. Hey, when we're saying square, man, we're saying two. No, that's just what weird math teachers do. Just think about the answer. But, but it makes sense, right? Square. And what do we call this? x would Cube. Cube is a word. Cube is a shortcut word, or I don't know if it's shortcut. It's another word for, for three, and square is another word for two. So when we call most roots square roots, we're saying they're two roots. We're saying the two that's really there. So if you have nothing in the hook, it's a square root, meaning there's an invisible understood two. It's the only understood two. We have a lot of understood ones, don't we, in math? It's only understood two I know of in math. That's why we two power both sides. But if you have a three, if you have a three in the hook, 
then you three power both sides. Whatever number you have in the hook, just do the same power and bang. It's the opposite, huh? It cancels it out like a poison in the antidote. It just neutralizes it. So if you have nothing in the hook, you really have a two. Did you understand my point in all that? If you have nothing in the hook, you really have an invisible two. That's why we two power. If you have a three, you do three. What's up? Isn't that good? And so then this will become x minus 11 cubed. Everything else on the other side just cancels out, and we're done. That's the inverse function. Powers and roots are always the opposite. We'll do that a lot in, as you move up the line in math. In this class, another class, powers and roots are the opposite. So if you have like a seventh root, to get rid of it, use seventh power. If you have a normal root with nothing in the hook, that means there's really a two. You get rid of it by a two power etc. And they cancel each other out because they are the opposites. And whatever you do to one side, you got to do the other to keep the balance, right? All right. On we go, if you're good, to number nine. Any other? So let's try this. The same kind of thing. They want us to find the inverse function. So same two steps. It's just a little messier. So step number one, switch x and y. Now, this f out here, that's, that's really y, isn't it? Function values are y values, aren't they? So I'm going to go ahead and switch right now. Now, what does that mean, switch? We mean every x, both of them, become y's. Poof! Instantaneously. And the y becomes an x. So this guy and these guys are going to switch. So it'll become x equals 2y plus 3 over 3y minus 1. See that? So the x's become y's and the y's become x's. That's an inverse function. We inverted the roles of x and y. We switched them. And now step 2. Solve for y. So how do you solve when you have a fraction on one side and you got a whole number or a whole letter, x, on the other, fraction and an x. Yeah, put it over one, diagonal, diagonal, right? So you make it look like a fraction, x over one, you go diagonal, diagonal. You cross, multiply. So we get x times 3y minus 1 is 1 times 2y plus 3. Like that. And then we distribute. So we'll get 3xy minus x. 1 times 2y is just 2y, and 1 times 3 is just 3. Good so far to there. Now this is where you want to kind of like keep your eye on the ball. So uh, who's the ball? What are, we, what are we trying to solve for here? The y, the y. So anywhere there's y, it, there's a y and there's a y. That's what makes this one more difficult. Is everybody seeing this? The y, the thing we're trying to solve for, is in two locations. That's new. We've never had that before. We've never had the y in two spots. So let me write some instructions specifically for that. Um, let me come up here. So the y in two spots. What do you do? Step one, get the y's on the same side. So the first thing you do is you got to, you're trying to solve for y, you want to isolate y, you want to get y alone, well, you're going to have to get the y terms. Yeah, I should have said y terms. Get the y terms. Get the y terms on the same side. Okay. Uh, to save some work and make it a little simpler, I'm just going to grab this term and just jump him that way. And I'm going to grab this minus x and jump him that way. So when things jump over the equal sign, like the old nursery rhyme, the cow jumps over the moon, right? So when, the, when things jump over the equal sign, they switch signs. That's what they do. I'm, I'm really just doing a shortcut here. I mean, you know, really I could just subtract 2y from both sides, right? See how, it, see how that would get rid of the 2y here 
and on the other side, it would be a negative 2y. See how it effectively just switched its sign and jumped to the other side? Do you see that? So I'm just going to save time and not show all that and just jump it, jump it. So this will become 3xy minus 2y. Write that. It was a positive 2y on the right side. It jumped to the left side. It became a negative 2y. When it switches sides, it switches signs. And then how about the negative x? He was negative on the left side, so when he jumps to the right side, positive x, or normal x, plus 3. Because I really, I really just added x to both sides, right? But I didn't want to bother to show that. That would have canceled this guy out and been a positive x on the other side. Same thing, right? I'm just saving some time by just quickly jumping. Now, wh why did I jump them both? Well, because I want... Both the terms that have y. See how both these terms have y and the others have no y's? That's the step number one. Get the y terms on one side, the non-y terms on the other. Separate them out. That's the first thing you have to do when y is in two spots. So there's step number one. Step number two, factor out the y and a parenthesis. So now you've got to come down here and factor out the y with a parenthesis. So I'm going to go y parenthesis. Remember factoring? What, what, so there's going to be two things. y times what and y times what will go back to 3xy and minus 2y. Yeah. 3x minus 2. See how that y could just redistribute and we'd be right back where we were? So that's all factoring is, huh? It's reverse multiplying. I just unmultiplied. I just said, what was it before it was multiplied? Factor out the y. Uh, what am I doing all this for? I'm trying to get y alone, remember? Solve for y. All of this is an effort to get y by itself, and now we're only one step away. Do you see how we gathered the y's on one side and then factored out the y? And then last step to get y alone, step, that was step two. Step three, divide by whatever's next to y, right? Just divide by the whole 3x minus 2. Whatever you do to one side, you got to do the other. These cancel. There it is, y's alone. See how that got y totally alone? And that's our answer. How are we doing? Is that making sense? Questions on that one? So step one. Switch X and Y. This is the Y out here, right? So switch those. The X's become Y's. The Y's become X's. So it becomes X equals y plus 3 over y plus 10. That good? So I switched x's and y's, right? The y in the front became x. The other two x's become y. y's. And solve for y. So the first step is cross multiply, right? Put that over 1. Go diagonal, diagonal. Okay, so we get x times y plus 10 is 1 times y plus 3. And then we distribute. And we get xy plus 10x is y plus 3. Everybody good to there so far? And then you got to focus in. Where's the y? This term has a y, and then that term has, that is a y. So we have to, so what do we do? So when y is in two spots, step one, get the y terms on the same side. So I'm going to jump this guy this way and this guy this way. Does that make sense? It doesn't really matter where, here, I'll, I'll put it right here. So I'm going to switch them. So that'll become x, y, minus y. Remember, when things switch sides, they switch signs, don't they? So when that regular y jumps to the left side, it becomes a negative y. 
And then when the 10x jumps to the other side, it becomes a negative 10x. You could actually put the negative 10x in the front or the back. It doesn't matter as long as you know it's a negative 10x. Is that good so far? When things switch sides, they switch signs. So notice I've got both the y terms together on the same side. That's step one. What's step two? Factor y with the parentheses. So factor out the y. Now what's that going to leave? Well, if you factor out y, y times what and y times what will go back? X minus 1. X minus 1. Beautiful. Do you all remember that minus 1? Because y times x will go back to xy, and y times 1 goes back to y, doesn't it? Is that good? There's step 2. And step 3... Divide by whatever's in the parentheses, right? So divide by whatever is in that parenthesis. So then divide by x minus 1, whatever you do to one side. No choice, same thing to the other. That gets y alone. There it is. That's the inverse function. We isolated y. We got y alone. We switched x and y, and we solved for y. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I keep wanting to be done with this one. Yeah, so now their final question to us is uh, to find f inverse of negative 3. Yeah, good question. So let me bring this over. So, so we're still on number 10. We've found the inverse function. What is it? Minus 10x plus 3 over x minus 1. And they want us, then they're saying, okay, what's f inverse of negative 3? So all of that work was to find the inverse function. Does that make sense? That, you know, switching x and y, solving for y, that gave us the inverse function. And then the final thing they want us to do is they say, okay, now put negative 3 in, please. So I just go, okay, you want me to plug negative 3 in to the inverse function. So I will do that, plug Negative 3 right there, and negative 3 right there. Does that make sense? It plugs in right there, right where x was. That's what x is in any function. It's the holes in the toaster. It's the insert slot. So I plug in negative 3 in those two spots, and then I just work it out. Let's see what we get here. Negative 10 times negative 3 is 30 plus 3, and this is negative 3 minus 1, so that's 33 over negative 4. We can't, we can't simplify that anymore. That's just... Okay, so what are we supposed to do on this one? We're supposed to find F inverse. Okay, same two steps. Step one, switch X and Y. So this is Y out here, so you know the drill. These guys are going to switch, aren't they? So it'll become X on the outside y on the other side. So just like normal, step one, switch x and y. There we go. And then step two, solve for y, just like normal. Okay, so there's just a little bit different step here. It's not as hard as the last couple. What do, you, what do we do to solve for y? y is saying, I want to be alone. So what do we do first? Well, we start with adding, subtracting, right? So y is over here saying, I want to be alone. Get rid of this minus 6 and this 11 power and this minus 5 so I can be alone. So who do we get rid of first? The minus 5, right? We always start with the adding, subtracting stuff. So start with the little stuff. Start with the adding, subtracting. And we get x plus 5. That good? I added 5 to both sides. So we're moving towards getting the y alone. Next, we want to get rid of that minus 6, huh? Now, that minus 6 is not subtracted. I can't, I can't add 6. It's not subtracted. It's times, right? It's right next to the y. So what do I do? Divide it. Perfect. So divide it. Divide by the minus 6. And what do you do to one side? You got to do to the other. So we get y to the 11th is x plus 5 over minus 6. So far, so good. Now... Last thing, how do we get rid of an 11 power? This is the new part I wanted to show you. What's, what's the opposite of 11 power? What's the opposite of powers always? 
Roots, exactly. Powers and roots are opposites. They're like a poison and an antidote. They undo each other, huh? So to get rid of that 11th power, I 11, you've got to put 11 in the hook. 11 root, both sides. These cancel, so the answer is the 11th root of x plus 5 over minus 6. 11th root of x plus 5 over minus 6. There is the inverse function. Does that make sense on that? Powers and roots are the opposite of each other.